Well, oh, they used to be game pants. <laughs> Hand me down. Well, you've been in this situation before, but early on, what's the feeling of getting ready to head to Omaha with this? It's always excitement. You're so happy that you're one of eight teams still playing. You know, for me, they know I love to practice, so uh, try to make the most of these practices. For the players, it's uh, prepare. Prepare to play good baseball, uh, physically, mentally, and um, and there's a balance. you got to be able to handle all the attention that they're getting, and I'm sure they're reading a lot on social media. Uh, but, you know, what we did a good job the last two weeks, you just got to prepare to play good baseball. Have you tweaked your approach anything you talked in the press conference about being better prepared? You know, you, know, you hope the, the more times you go, the more experience you get, uh, you learn from it. Um, just try to make good decisions, try to coach the kids up, try to give them some advice. You know, after winning Saturday, it was nice that we could uh, spend time with family and friends Saturday night. We met Sunday, uh, they got a good workout in, and we had a good meeting just about, you know, preparing them for what these next couple weeks will look like. And I just shared my experiences. I kind of encouraged them on some do's and don'ts and uh, just to help them feel comfortable. Um, you know, you want them to enjoy it. They, they, they need to enjoy this, and their family and friends need to enjoy it. But as we always say, keep the main thing the main thing, and that's getting ready to play good baseball. Coach Mike seems to be in pretty good spirits after everything. How was he like around the facility last week? McAveen? Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, we had a couple of mics, so yeah, you know he he handled it like a champ. I mean, you know, as, as his head coach, you're so proud of him. Uh, and it dawned on me. I think he's our highest GPA. Um, and each year in Omaha, they give an award to the highest GPA student athlete from each team. And, you know, it's a reminder, man, this kid's a good kid. I mean, he's a good student. Um, and just how the team rallied around him, how the fans rallied around him. Um, but he didn't make it about himself either. I mean, he, he, he knew his job was to just encourage and support his teammates. And, and he did a wonderful job. And, you know, we're happy that he gets a chance to play again. Do you think there was a spark for those guys? I mean, you know, we talk about all the time. You got to step up. You got to handle adversity. And if there, if that was adversity for our pitching staff, for our program, um, the guys definitely rallied around. Like we always say, winning and, and success is not supposed to be easy. So you know, don't expect things to just go your way. And when something like that happens, you know, it, it can go one or two ways. And I think our guys handled it very well. And you like the fact that this team plays with an edge. How do you keep their edge sharp? <laughs> you know. I mean, we, we, we preach it all the time. We challenge them. Uh, I don't have to do a whole lot now. That they're they're enjoying this. They're having a lot of fun, and um, the dugout has a lot of energy. The guys on the field should have a lot of energy. The guys coming out of the bullpen um, are doing their their part. So, you know, when you get momentum like this, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't change. Uh, let's just be who we are, and, and that's playing with an edge. What does playing with an edge mean? Well, I think you see the emotion that we have, um, the energy, the, the we, we, we always talk about playing for each other. I think celebrating others' accomplishments when someone gets a big hit or someone gets a home run or someone gets a strikeout. You see the guys in the dugout, um, just everybody pulling for each other and everybody enjoying this, realizing uh, this is a team event and we're doing this for each other. And um, But you can just tell by their focus, playing every pitch, uh, how guys run out on defense after they strike out, you name it. I mean, when you talk about edge, there's a lot of things as a coach that you're looking at, uh, as well as, you know, there's also crossing the line and losing focus and letting a lot of energy go to places it shouldn't. So you just try to balance that and make sure guys are in the right place, and obviously they are. Then you're always tinkering with the lineup, but to make a change like you did in the regional, how much thought went into it with you guys back and forth and, and it didn't seem to help. You know, I made a change in the College World Series a couple years ago and I remember texting Joe Madden, who I'd gotten to know, and he's one of those bold managers, you know, like didn't seem to worry about what everybody thought. He just makes decisions that he thinks are best for his team. I remember texting him, we were going back and forth and he was so adamant about you're with these guys, you know, basically 365 a year you do what you think's best and they'll trust you and and we tweaked the lineup a little bit in Omaha maybe a little too late uh, so when I was in this situation again you know you're sitting there going it's just something's not working um, I could be hard-headed or I could try to say you know we've won a bunch of games with the lineup like this or you could say 
it's really about now, what's best for these kids now. And uh, the coaches were on board. Everybody supported it. And then I just, you know, my job is to just grab some hitters and explain, you know, I'm not that type that, hey, I post the lineup. This is the way it is. Like it or leave. I, I like to communicate with the guys. I like to talk to them, uh, make sure they understand what I'm thinking. Because a lot of times you think they know what you're thinking, but that's not the case. I think my job is to communicate with them. And I, I grabbed Snyder and I grabbed Wyatt and I started grabbing a few hitters just to explain the change in the lineup. And they they trusted it. They handled it well. And obviously, you know, it showed. What is What do you feel like has been the difference with it in kind of stretch your speed out a little bit, your power guys out a little bit? I, I think just from a baseball standpoint, just gave us probably more balance that, you know, we had all the speed guys together and all the bigger hitters, or you call it together, and, you know, some days it worked and it looked great and you put up double-digit runs, but then there were other days, especially that last couple weeks, man, where pitchers were having too much success and not pitching enough from the stretch and not getting enough guys on, so you kind of you take those on-base percentage guys and try to spread them out, and hopefully one of those guys can get on with no outs or one out, and that changes the, the whole dynamic. And, um, you know, I think the biggest change you see in this generation is a guy like Logan Wyatt hitting in the two-hole. You know, 20 years ago, you would never, you wouldn't see that. You know, nowadays you see, we talk about Joe Madden, Schwarber, or Rizzo, you know, and you go around the country and there's this big physical hitter in the two-hole. Uh, where to me, Jake Snyder was the prototypical two-hole hitter 20 years ago. When I played the game and, and many years of coaching, you needed a guy like Jake in the two-hole. Well, nowadays, they're putting more of like your old four-hole hitters seem to be hitting in that two spot. And so I've seen it work for other programs. So, you know, I say, hey, let's, let's give it a shot. And other than the beard, what makes Alex Manellis play like a veteran? We've been saying it all year. It's, it's been a professional approach. Um, you know, even when he had all the success in the middle of the season, you don't want to get ahead of yourself. You realize he's a freshman. It's a long season. Let's let's let this thing play out. And here we are in Omaha, and he's in our four hole, and his at bats look really good, and he's competing, and and um, he he belongs. He's obviously not a freshman anymore. We tell those young guys when you go through a long season like this, but um, it's always they always have to have the talent, and they all come here with the right talent. It's usually the maturity the dealing with failure uh and he's been able to handle that and uh and you got to trust your ability i think when you get to this level and you fail you start to doubt they're not used to failing where even when he failed he never saw a different look in his eye the same business-like approach show up every day get after it and the guys know he belongs and he knows he belongs i heard you saying that uh, 17 team was the most talented he's ever had. this one might have the most depth I, I think so. I mean, anytime you plan a team with Brendan McKay, it's hard to say that might not be the most talented. And then, of course, Ellis and Hairston and Hensman and, and Fitch and all those great players. Um, but I think we've preached depth all year. We've gone through injuries. When Dunn was out of the lineup, when uh, Britton was out of the lineup, when Oriente was out of the lineup, we, we were able to overcome when when Bennett didn't throw for a couple of weeks or Kieran didn't throw and Poland didn't throw and then you go through a Super Regional without your closer, I think Fitz is spot on when it's hard to, to not think you have as much depth or at least enough depth to uh, to continue to play good baseball. Is that a meaningful thing in this point in the season? Is depth the deciding factor or is it just raw talent? No, I think it's, it's a little bit of everything. And you could get in a 16 inning game in Omaha it's a tournament, so you've only got so much pitching, so many position players. You can't change. Once you hand in your 27-man roster, that's it for the next two weeks. And I try to challenge the pitchers, and I challenge the position players. Who's going to come off the bench in the 15th inning? Who's going to be a hero in Omaha and get a big hit when nobody, you know, maybe didn't know your name until that at bat? Are you going to be prepared? Um, and so they know I preach, I preach our depth and talent uh, throughout the year. As good as they this? are, is it nice to face a familiar opponent in that first game? Guys, uh, an opponent guys have seen before. Yeah, I mean, you think that there's a lot of respect for them. Um, we've played well. We, I think we beat them two of the last three years. Obviously, they beat us this year, so they're familiar with a lot of the kids. So I, I would like to think anybody you're playing in Omaha is going to grab your attention, but maybe it adds a little more when it's a it's a team we know a lot about, have a lot of respect for, and 
uh, looking forward to getting a chance to play him again, especially after they beat us earlier in the year. When do you stop communication? <laughs> well, uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, baseball coaches, we're not afraid to text message and um, we're not afraid to cut up and, and throw some jabs back and forth at each other. As, as long as we're not giving away detailed information, um, I'll see him Wednesday night, you know, at the at the NCAA meeting and, and we'll cross paths several times uh, between now and then. What do you remember from that midway game against Vandy? Great game up until about the eighth inning. And, uh, you know, we didn't make a couple plays. I didn't think we played, you know, our, our loosest. I thought we were a little tight that night. And we didn't have the, the services of a couple pitchers because of the, the Notre Dame weekend before and it caught up to us late. But you just know they got really good lineup. I mean, they play the game in all three areas. They always got great pitching. They got great athletes. They're going to defend. Um, they got a good lineup. But I just remember being a 2-2 game to the eighth. How do you go with the pitching lineup this weekend, or do you do you even worry about beyond game one? No, it's it's one game at a time, and and you know you lean towards Detmers, obviously, uh, for all the right reasons. But you always want to give Coach Williams a chance to. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's break down their lineup. Let's make sure you know the splits. Let's see where they have success, maybe where they struggle a little bit. And I think in our world, knowing you got Detmers, Miller, and Bennett, you got three really good candidates. And you could put them in any order. And and so, you know, let's just wait till we have to make that final decision. But I know in his mind, he's going to prepare guys. He's going to prepare who's going to throw on Sunday. And then you know you're playing again on Tuesday. So who's going to? You know, look at our two teams now that you know it's going to be Auburn or Mississippi State. How does how does each pitcher match up against those guys? So, you know, just like you would in any postseason. Let's you won 600 more. games, but Rogers been with you for all those. How big of a of a weapon is it to have? Him? I, I don't. We, we have We would not have won 600 or whatever games without him. I mean, it's uh, it's the best pitching coach in the country. It's a guy that I had a lot of respect for before I got the job here, but. Being able to hire him elevated our program immediately because of the value of pitching. And so really the only jab I have on him is, you know, he's lost as many games as I've lost too in the last <laughs> 13 years. But, you know, other than that, it's it's a real comforting feeling knowing um, you have, again, who you feel is the best pitching coach in the country and um, that you trust and you know he's going to have these guys ready. What did this last week reveal to you about this team's resolve, just in, especially since you're on the, on the brink of the line? Well, we definitely showed our toughness. Uh, you know, we talk a lot. It's not supposed to be easy. You know, don't think, you know, somebody does something special or you, you win a Super Bowl or a World Series or a National Championship because it's easy. you got to be able to overcome, you know, injuries, suspensions setbacks, defeat. Fortunately, in baseball, you are allowed to lose a couple times throughout the postseason. So just gave us a chance to address those things. And and for me, I can say after these last two weekends, man, it's uh, really proud of our fan base. It'd be, be remiss if I don't give a lot of love and glory to the atmospheres we had on a Monday afternoon, on a last minute notice, on a Friday afternoon, on a Saturday with a lot of rain in the forecast. And Jim Patterson Stadium was rocking. And uh, for me, that that's exciting because our fan base has grown. We, we've got loyal fans, supportive fans, and hopefully now a bunch of fans that, that'll go out to Omaha. Coach Dawson said that this park is better for the way it is constructed. It's the College World Series park. Similar? Yeah. Good enough. <laughs> Good enough. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks.